I'm sure that a lot of uh, screenwriters come to you for advice about how to, to get things made, how to get things written, get things produced. Now, the, the terrain is in some ways today easier, in some ways harder. And what kind of advice do you give to people who ask you about your profession? I, I think it is uh, harder, actually, today. We are very lucky. I think quite a lot of writers my generation uh, was television, in the, uh, certainly in the 70s, with, uh, when single drama, they don't happen, they very rarely happen now. There was the play for today, to remember, where once a week there was a 90 minutes, two hour, uh, heavy, could be powerful. Uh, there was a great deal of freedom for writing. And also there was a great apprenticeship, learning the craft of it through the practicality of it. So I think it was a very lucky time for us. I think it is a lot harder now, mm. actually. And the only thing is, uh, I think this, presumably why you're all here, and write, that you've got to write, there's something you must write. Uh, I remember starting off writing, I um, did have the, the political theatre in the early 70s. I wanted to write plays that were going to change the world, Sus was that sort of thing. I, I haven't lost the idealism, but I, I think now perhaps the only thing it can do is change emotions, change sympathies, change feelings, and be influential in that kind of uh, way. But um, this is part of it. Is I, I think the thing is, if you're burning to write something, then write it. Uh, the selling of it comes afterwards, uh, usually, to place it. There's things you can do then. But what I th why, why to write things? Why to write things? Go back to that Barry Hansen and I, the producer of Longer Friday. We were sitting in a restaurant. I remember it was in uh, Fulham Road, a Thai restaurant. And what film would we like to see tonight? And that was the film we wanted to do. So whatever you're writing, that's something you want to see. Um, and it's got to satisfy you uh, first, I think, to have the energy for the long haul, or maybe lucky but to get it done. But it's got to be something that you are really proud of, uh, so get it exactly right. Um, also, the other thing is, uh, 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 bear in mind the dramatic writing, there's lots of reasons why doing that writing screen phase. Yes, all the reasons, like I said once, wanted to change the world. But actually, don't bear, bear in mind everything. You write wonderful parts for actors to play. That is the thing, and that is what's going to it's hook get an actor as much as a director, but a wonderful parts for actors to play. On, on, an anecdote on Longer Friday, by the way, where I first met Bob Hoskins, uh, um, he was a, 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 came into acting by chance. He went with a friend, for, he was working as a meat porter, at, is it Billingsgate or whatever it was, no, Smithfield, 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 yeah. And uh, with a friend that wanted to be an actor, went to an audition, and Bob went with him to keep him company. And uh, they said next, and called Bob in, and he read the script. He got the part, and so it's cheered by chance. And uh, <laughs> I love this guy very, very much. And um, his wonderful energy as much as anything else. But uh, uh, Barry Hansen was doing theatre at um, Hull, and Bob had just started in uh, acting, then suddenly took to it like a duck to water, of course, natural, never occurred to him before. And um, he was playing Richard III, uh, and went up to see it at the matinee at Hull, and uh, Bob came out, and there was about 12 people in the audience, and Bob walked on, and said, now is the winner of our discontent, three, four, five, fuck this, not doing this for 12 of you, come to the pub, do it again tonight. <laughs> but on that, the laughter, as you, you're finding, I don't know if you do, the writing is, I find it such a lonely, lonely, lonely business. That is, what have I been doing for the last 30 years? Sitting in a room on my own, telling myself lies. It's no job for a grown up, is it? But there's a lot of fun on it, like the Bob thing there. Uh, the other thing, if you saw a clip, when the sus, was, it can be, that's the joy, of course, the production after the loneliness of the writing uh, and the meetings, and uh, that makes it all worthwhile. Uh, on the sus, the other actor I like very much, that did it originally in the theatre, Paul Barber. A very serious classical actor, but also um, best known for Only Fools and Horses and things like that now. 
And then suss the play, it all takes in place in one night interrogation. First of all, first scene, and then he's given the bloodstained night, nightgown, and he's, your wife's dead, blackout. Lights up 30, 40 seconds later, he's sobbing at the table, being interrogated, a harsh interrogation. I could never quite understand, and Paul was actually, sometimes with a matinee in the afternoon as well, each performance, that blackout 40 seconds, he was sobbing, 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 and I asked the director, I said, how does he manage to do that every performance? She said, well, we work through where he is in society, the lowest rung, the agony of his slavery days of the legacy, and the... Then Paul, I think we had a couple of drinks, I said, Paul, for fuck's sake, how come you're crying in that 40 seconds? How'd you do it? He says, well, I just think of Elvis dying. <laughs> he started sobbing. So, of course, take the work very seriously, but it can be, um, do enjoy the fun of it. Um.